are you relaxed now? Are you, can you take a breath now that camp is over? How are you feeling? Yeah, you, you know, that is a good question, Victor. You know, it's like a, the first phase of going into back to a, to a regular season mode. And you get, you kind of, for me, it, it was like a real, you know, kind of coming back to school kind of thing. First time, you know, covering the Rams. So the, the two weeks and a half in Irvine, I was getting settled, settled in. And I know we were talking about this before, uh, you know, the show that, you know, are you going to start driving a thousand oaks? So that part of going to Irvine is over with, and, I, and I'm living kind of close to Irvine. So now I have to go super far uh, to thousand oaks. So Victor, you are the producer of the show. There, there are going to be times where I'm, I'm going to be grumpy or I'm going to say, Hey, wait for me. I'm stuck in traffic. So please bear with me uh, for these TL drives. But overall that, that first kind of phase of football, the training camp, I'm surprised it kind of it went well. I was thinking like it's gonna take me a month or two to kind of know the roster. Uh, and once I got into the pads and and the team drills were going, you know, I felt like I was I was just taking a bunch of notes, learning names. And hey, first team, second team, I'm ready to do a depth chart. So uh, I think the training camp uh, phase really helped me out in this kind of transition with with a new beat uh, for a new team. What what's been the biggest observation? Like, okay, so we're we're gonna get into your story here uh, with the eight observations. So let let's let's start with that. What what has been? Let's start with number one. What was the biggest observation? And then you you'll break it down for us. That is a key word, Victor. Observations. You were observing my Twitter or my stories. You knew that I just posted this story on the Orange County Register. Uh, my eight observations from Rams training camp in Irvine. I thought it was a good time to do a story like this because the training camp is over. Uh, so please check that out. The Orange County Register, LA Daily News, or follow me on Twitter at gmonsan24. So, you know, Victor, I, I was going to do 11 ob observations, but I was like, wow, we, we've done enough Stafford. You know, we've done enough Allen Robinson. Uh, and there's a couple others that I just wanted to save for stories. Like I want to check in eventually on Joe Noteboom. Uh, the new left tackle for the Rams was replacing Andrew Whitward. I'll get to him eventually. But I and, and also I did a story already on the secondary, so I narrowed it down to eight. And the biggest thing, as you you know this, you know this, Victor, because you like to play fantasy football. People oh. want to know this time of year about the wide receivers, like wide receiver three, wide receiver four, and what's the running back committee looking like. So I opened with Cam Akers, and and, and there's I was surprised a lot of people thought that Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers were going to compete. And that's not the case. It's Cam Akers' job. So that was the lead of the story, Victor. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had a whole kind of uh, section on Bobby Wagner because I was fascinated for a guy to be 11 years in the NFL, brand new team, to be making that many plays. So Bobby Wagner stood out. Those were definitely my top two uh, eight uh, camp observations with the Rams. Yeah, because, I mean, Daryl Henderson was a starter. And I, and I get Cam, Cam Akers was a second-round pick. He was hurt most of last season. He came in for the playoff run, and, you know, they, they were a good one-two punch in the playoffs. And so that's why I think people thought that we, you know, especially fantasy uh, owners, they want to know if Cam Akers is going to be the one that takes the majority of the carries or is it going to be a split situation? And, you know, people are, you know, tuning in, you know, or, or trying to read your articles because they're trying to figure out, hey, before I go out and, and you know, put a draft pick on a first round or a second round pick on, on Cam Akers. I need to know if he's going to get the majority of the, uh, of the carries. What do you think? Like, especially for fantasy owners right now. Yeah. You, you know, it's funny because, you know, some people kind of see my, my tweets about Cam Akers and they ask me a question, you know, what's going on, you know, with Daryl Henderson. And I knew this response was going to pick up and it got some steam on Twitter. And, and, and I said, you know, Cam Akers looks impressive. He's definitely the lead back. So I, I quiet all that down. Uh, and the funny part, Victor, was like, you know, it is kind of already, what, almost middle August. A lot of drafts have taken place. And they're like, oh, crap. I, I already was thinking that it would be Daryl Henderson. I, I messed up on Cam Akers. So that's the funny part. Uh, but uh, sorry, I'm going around. What was your question real quick on Cam Akers? No, no, it was just about fantasy. I mean, you pretty okay. much answered it. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the, the other only other question I have for you is, I, I saw that Tutu Adwell is blowing up in camp, and you've been people have been at, at, at you know hitting up your Twitter about how he's he's been uh, one of the breakout stars of camp. 
Yeah, it's funny because we, we have to preview a preseason game, but it kind of feels like that doesn't matter as much because it's preseason. People want to know about this story, right, Victor? They want to know about right, the eight exactly. Uh, But the funny thing, you know, we could segue this way to the preseason game because Tutu Atwell will be playing in the preseason game. He'll probably be a starter uh, because, you know, he is a youngster. He hasn't proven himself in the NFL. He is a second-year guy. And, Victor, we were talking before the show that he was a second-round pick high expectations from Louisville and didn't really do much as a rookie. He got hurt, barely played. I think it was a shoulder injury, missed out most of the, the back end of the second half. And then Van Jefferson got hurt with the, with the knee tweak and he started getting opportunities and it, and it kind of felt like the coach was like, coaches were, he, he was a little, little bit in the doghouse, but now it's like, okay, you know what? Things happen. Let's design plays for Tutu Atwell. Let's help him out with his skill set. We got to make life easier for Tutu to find his groove and they started design, designing plays to extend the speed and get in downfield. Like there was a the, the, one of the prettiest plays, Victor, from the camp was uh, a John Wolfer rollout to his left, throwing across his body to the other side of the field, finding two to Adwell 50 yards downfield for a touchdown. Uh, when you roll out like that, you create time, you buy time, you don't need much time for two to. Uh, and then Bryce Perkins, he is just throwing up prayers for two to. That's how much you trust two to. So, he was definitely one of the guys I observed and stood out to me in, in training camp, but he's ha- he has to prove it in the preseason. These these flashes in camp are nice, you know, they're getting people excited, but he hasn't proven anything in real games, and that's why Sean McVay said he's going to play. So he's definitely going to be a story come Saturday night against the Chargers. It's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, non-starters and and players you don't know who, or or who you're familiar with, but two tell what you will know. He will be on the field, so I'm definitely gonna have my binoculars out there on Saturday night and keep it an eye on number 15. Yeah, I, you were, that was one of the names we were gonna talk about was Bryce Perkins. So you you already brought him up. For me, I I, I think it's we were just before we jumped in, we we were talking about the the punting and how it's weird not to have Johnny Hecker on. Like he came with the Rams from St. Louis, like he had a show out there, a radio show. He was part of the community here in LA, so. It's really how has that been? Yeah, you know that that was another one of the notes, uh, Victor. Uh, you know, I think I wrote is like, I think there's a competition, a punter a com- com- competition because, uh, you know, I have it here. So let me just check real quick. You know, yeah, it was Sean McVay and special teams coordinator Joe DiCamillis. Hopefully, I'm not butchering his name with, for Joe D. Uh, but they both confirmed that there was there is a, a, a punter battle. You know, Riley Dixon is a guy who knows the special teams coordinator from the days in Denver. He's a veteran. And he was brought in to replace Johnny Hecker. And, and it's, it, you know, there is a competition also, also because, you know, Johnny Hecker was, was still very good. But it, when you're making budget cuts the way that the Rams are, it's like, OK, we need to save two million dollars, not two million. Two million dollars is nobody for most teams, but we got to let them go. Uh, so they're buying a, a, a veteran, Riley Dixon, who knows the special teams coordinator. Uh, but they're both saying uh, the both coaches are saying there is a battle. So. I haven't seen it taking place in training camp. So you would think this battle is going to really pick up in the preseason games when they're actually kicking, there's people coming at you, uh, there's pressure. So uh, definitely right now, Riley Dixon is, a, is in the lead for the job. Uh, but this other guy, Cameron uh, Dicker, uh, he was brought in also because he's versatile. When you when you need guys, when you're playing a, special, a specialist position, it's better when you do more. And, and Cam is a kicker and a punter. So... You know, you like to have guys like that in case an injury happens because you're not going to have an extra roster spot for another kicker. Uh, yeah. So they brought in uh, Cameron Dicker to compete with Riley Dixon. So uh, he's a young dude. So we'll see how he does. Uh, but he's playing catch up. And but again, I kind of like that they are taking it uh, into the preseason games to see how it is, because, again, uh, no one's running at you full speed. So that's something that I guess, you know, you know, I should really pay attention to. I know we neglect special teams and, and punters, but. You reminded me, Victor, that is a storyline for sure for Saturday night. Yeah, and well, especially with uh, special teams. I mean, is in the playoffs, they 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 can be costly. We've seen we've seen what happened with the Bears, where the where the kicker hit the uprights, stuff like that. It, Remember it, the it, Packers it, last year against the Niners? Yeah, exactly. the yeah, it's big. Yeah, exactly. Uh, some I, and here as a producer, I, you know, we got to keep things rolling. So I, I have three other names that we brought up. Okay. Before, before we uh, is uh, Darion Kendrick, Logan Bruss, and the Kobe Durant. Uh, tell me about each one of them. 
Yeah, that, that is a big thing for preseason as well as the rookies getting their first time to get some, you know, game action. And those three guys you mentioned are, are part of the 2022 draft class for the Rams. Yes, they do make draft picks for Rams. I know uh, they give them jokes about that. But Logan Bruss was the first pick for the Rams, but it just happened in the third round. And it's funny because when I, on my first day on the job for the, for the Rams B, a lot of people were already talking like Logan Bruss is going to start at, at right guard. That did not turn out to be the case. Sean McVay valued the experience of Coleman Shelton a fourth-year guy, and I don't even know if I recall a time where Logan Bruss was playing with the first team uh, when Coleman wasn't out there because anytime Logan Bruss got a first-team rep at right guard, Coleman Shelton was shifting over to center to give Brian Allen a breather. So that's when he got his run. But whenever Coleman Shelton and Brian Allen were on the field, there was no sign of Logan Bruss. So uh, they're going to take their time with that and develop them, develop them, I can't say Victor. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's been a Logan long day, man. It has been. Uh, and the other two are, I'm very intrigued because these guys are pushing the cornerbacks, the Kobe Durant and uh, Darion Kendrick. And these guys, you know, are the back end of the draft. Uh, Darion Kendrick, I want to say, is six round draft pick from Georgia. Uh, the Kobe Durant is a fourth round draft pick. And they were they had to work their way up in the depth chart, and they really they really popped out uh, in training camp, especially the the at uh, the feistiness, uh, athleticism from Darion Kendrick going up against Allen Robinson. Like he, he he got like you know he got burned a lot, and there was a lot of growing pains, but he was always physical. He was always around the ball, and they liked that attitude from him. And then the Kobe Durant, they just liked them to play the slot, and they said, "Hey, you got to learn to play the slot." And he ended up doing it pretty well. So they got a lot of run with the first team. I don't know. They're not going to really crack the first team unit because that's already set. Jalen Ramsey, Troy Hill, David Long. But those two guys, if they're making splash plays in preseason, uh, along with Robert Rochelle, who's a second-year corner, then they're going to be really in the mix for, for the cornerback rotation. Uh, but I am very intrigued because those guys put on a show in training camp. But again, you got to do it in the games. And I know we're running short on time here, but – how much does it help to have like a Cooper Cup um, and you know the uh, kind of offense that they have to go up against those kind of guys to get them prepared for you know when you have young guys like that? How how much does that help? It's big because you know I was trying to kind of tiptoe around the question with Allen Robinson. I'm, I kind of want to be like, hey man, you're a Pro Bowl wide receiver. You got burned a couple of times by this, this rookie here. So I was like, hey, is that unique that this young guy is you know? doing PBUs on you on a pretty consistent base. And he's like, uh, no, this guy's actually flashing. He's, he's doing his work, and I don't care that he's a rookie. And Adam Robinson gave him a full, full credit there on Kendrick. So, uh, yeah, when you're going, to, going against Cooper Cup and, and Alan Robinson and, and Matthew Stafford throwing the ball and even a guy like John Wolford, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And all, all you want to do is be competitive. And then when you do have the mistakes, short memory and, 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 and forget about it because the funny thing about being on the sideline, Victor, uh, Raheem Morris, the defensive corner for the Rams, he, he is a funny dude. He, he has a personality and he's always trash talking. Uh, I can't even say the things he's telling these rookies, but he's so good at getting their mind right. Like, okay, get over it and then get it back, back on. So uh, that's been fun to see these quarterbacks, you know, try to pick up the rookies and the rookies saying uh, not that easy. Yeah, no, I talking about Raheem Morris. Uh, one of your one of the interviews you had uh, after after one of the training camps, I, I heard um, Bobby Wagner talking about it, and he was talking about how when you were talking about the walkie talkies, and he he was saying that he talked a lot of trash in the, and he can't he, he couldn't say anything back, so he was stuck there. Yeah, yeah, that that was a funny thing with Raheem and Bobby Wagner because. You know, Raheem he just likes to talk, and Bobby was like, "Hey, can I talk back in the walkie-talkie?" And, and he couldn't do it. Uh, but, but Victor, you know, you know, I, I'm, you know, Bobby Wagner definitely won't play. You know, he's he's a guy, uh, he's stand out. But the thing I'll end off here, be, you know, and sign off real quick is uh, the quarterbacks. Uh, Bryce Perkins will be the starter on Saturday night. It will not be John Wolford. Definitely not Matthew Stafford, because what's going on with Matthew Stafford with the elbow? They got to protect John Wolford too, so you won't see the number two quarterback. It'll be Bryce Perkins, and uh, and hopefully Luis Perez. I think he was saying he wasn't sure yet because you know maybe they will give uh, Bryce a full game. 
because Luis got into the he as you guys saw in the interview, he got to the team a month ago, so it's pretty fast paced. We'll see. Uh, but those are the two quarterbacks. And uh, Victor, how do you think we did for this first kind of combo preview with the Ramirez brothers, Chargers? And we got an interview with a quarterback from the Rams in the middle, and then us here to end it. I know we're trying Probably. to practice it, to talk together and bring up the teams, but not bad for a preseason kind of. Oh, no, we're, uh, we're also in season form, I would say, right? We're, we're, we're getting, we're getting started too. So we're, we're trying to get the hang of this and, and, you know, hopefully by, uh, by the time uh, the Bills game rolls around for opening week, we'll, we'll be ready to roll. What do you think? Yeah, no, definitely. We got the practice here. It's good to mix up the teams. Uh, I'll say we're the first team uh, here, uh, Victor, Fernando, and Dan and Dago are the second team. Uh, but, you know, I, I love that we're making more content. We're expanding. Uh, and it sounds like, you know, maybe we're going to keep doing this. You know, I, I like this kind of setup here and get more interviews. Uh, so, so overall, uh, I think it's the first good, you know, tryout here with the two teams, but, uh, Victor, I don't even want to plug anything because I know you don't get a lot of airtime on the show. We appreciate all the work you do as a producer, uh, all these cool backgrounds, all these banners, all the shifting on the, on the cameras. That's all you. So g- give me, a, you know, 30 seconds on which, whatever you want to plug or anything you want to talk about because you got, you need your shine, man. Well, no, well, I, I'm a team player, so I'm going to say go. Make sure you go read all the stuff that Gilberto is, is putting out there, whether it's videos on, on Twitter, everything he puts out, please go and follow. Follow us on Compass OTV, on Twitter, you know, on, on Instagram, on TikTok. I know we haven't been posting a lot on TikTok. But we try to be funny with it. That, I mean, it gets kind of boring just putting up interviews. So, um, and on YouTube, like, we're trying to get a thousand su- subscribers so please subscribe give us those five stars and that's it for me yeah victor uh you know people know me or they they we go way back a long time when they say uh gilberto or gilberto uh or gilberto like that and I, 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 I don't know do I, don't, I, mean <laughs> I can tell you're kind of stumbling on which way to go but i don't know daniel yeah. that long but he's perfected it uh yeah. But yeah we do go back 10 years so i'm glad we're doing this podcast together uh hopefully we do it again and in the near future and thank you for everybody listening supporting the contact content uh i know usually i say with fernando but i'll say it now ya nos vamos pues vámonos <laughs>